Any sex is still going. <laughs> So today I've got a lot of notes, so I'm going to stream it after they got from last week. It's a very long homily. Let's start with memorial. Three points of today's homily. Uh, memorial Day, Church, and Salvation. Uh, what is the Memorial Day weekend? If you have a job, be grateful. It's tough out there. It's all the time. It is. Labor. It's grateful you have a job. Work is a gift from God. We don't necessarily see it that way, but it is. Hardest work you'll ever do the rest of your life. Pray. By far, the spiritual life is the hardest work you'll do the rest of your life. And you're doing it. This is actually a kind of work. Participating in the very sacrifice Christ gave to, help, to the Father for our sakes. And uh, by the gift of the Holy Eucharist, sanctifying us, making us one body in Christ. And hopefully going out and doing some spiritual work. But I, I just want to touch on the point of Memorial Day. Uh, Labor Day. Labor Day, excuse me. <laughs> correct me the first time. We did. What? You guys sleeping? <laughs> oh, you know what? Let's get back to Labor Day. But it reminds me, I don't know if I can of uh, Be With Me, Lord, I'm Out of Trouble. You're all singing. This is a singing crowd. I like it. I like it. How about Lord Be With Me Before I Get In Trouble? <laughs> Wouldn't it be a better song? Yeah. Be with me, Lord, before I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's my prayer. <laughs> yeah. I've got the Lord with me all the time. It's like about marriage and sickness and health and good times and in bad and death until everlasting life. Okay, Labor Day. Thank you, good Lord, we have jobs. I'm just being very sincere, and it's very important to say this. Because a lot do not have jobs. So, A, be grateful, thankful, stop gossiping at the workplace, and give your children work. Do not let your children off the hook. I, I, I stood purposely, I sat, and watched the entire market thinking I had a dream day when they all gave me speeches. Okay? Take this with the best sense. I already gave this homily. I was already field tested at the Daily Mass. So I'm repeating what I said at the early Daily Mass. Dreams are great. You know what people need today? Plans. And if young people don't have the plans to, be, to get either higher education and or a specific, a specific skill set, dreams aren't going to help. Dreams are the things of fairy tales. We need plans. We need dedicated, committed people. We need a greater work ethic. Look. I just want to finish off this homily. Is the United States, in my opinion, after being, to 50, after being to 57 countries, the greatest country in the world? Yes, it is. Is it perfect? No, it is not. Are there racist people, sexist people, mean people, evil people? Yes, there are. But they should not define you. They should not define you. You should be able to have the, the sense about yourself, the goals, the objectives, the drive, and the sense of the, the old American, I'm going to say it, bravado, that I'm going to succeed. And you will not define me. But some people choose to be defined by others. It's really unfortunate. So, uh, we can't underestimate work. Now, of all the work you have to do, spiritual life is the hardest. Here's the work I want to emphasize today. And I'm going to emphasize it for God takes away my dying breath. We, you and I, we got to talk about faith more. Don't you think I know when I come to Mass? I get a few laughs out of you. I give you a little instruction. Maybe, maybe a little tweaking of your understanding of the Gospel. Don't you think I already know that I'm preaching to the choir? Don't you think I know that? There might be a few people out of this crowd, a few, that are not Roman Catholics, or that are not very, very serious about their faith. I know your faces. You're here all the time. My purpose is to strengthen you, to encourage you, to hopefully, with the, with the skill set I have, to animate you, so you go out and talk about the faith. You're, you're not really my target audience, in a sense. It's your family. It's your coworkers. It's the guys that run with those guys from Starbucks. Just, just for today, just, just today, I was invited to go to Prairie Ridge to say an opening prayer of the Prairie, uh, of the Prairie Ridge Junior Wolves. This is a, this is a crystal lake. How about that? I said a prayer in a public forum. Did he get arrested? No one said I broke the Constitution. I don't have any lawsuits pending yet. But somebody invited me. I went. Now, of all the people that were there, I, I, I suspect the vast, because no one's very few said hello to me. I suspect and I'm a very sensitive guy, I suspect the vast majority were not Catholic. Did I convert them? Probably not. Probably not. Did, did I give them an opportunity to make the church look good? <coughs> I think I did. I tried. I didn't tell any, any goofy jokes. I stuck to the script. It was a pretty innocuous prayer. I didn't make it a Catholic prayer. I just made it, oh, God, help the kids and give the referees good eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> and made good. Well, I got to tell my 
So like in a second, in a second. But anyway, what if it was something that a soldier uh, uh, returned, I uh, you vet, flipped a coin, and, and I said the prayer, and, and maybe I strengthened a few Catholics who thought, you know what, if he can do this in front of all these strangers on a public, on a public field, maybe I can do it in the context of my own home or in the context of my workplace. It is so important. And after that, I went, after I got fed, you know, the preacher gets his keep. I had a couple of I, I really overate. And I went to the Crystal Lake of Southgate. They got, uh, they were, how do I say it nicely? They got beat by Mary. Let's just say that. <laughs> and, I, and I showed up. Again, did I convert anybody there? I don't think so. I went to both sides. I wanted to go to those uh, controversial ble bleachers. So I wanted to go and walk up on top of it. I looked over. You know, I felt the breeze of controversy all around me. But uh, on the Marian side, it was just nice being there. I got respect. A lot of Catholics. And I got to tell you, this is, this is obviously, I'm not going to lie to you. The 50 50 guys have 50 50 raffles. He goes, Oh, I love coming on the Marian side. I go, Why is that? He goes, It's Catholics. Just keep shelling up cash. <laughs> he says, When Catholics go to an event, it's like, Okay, who am I giving money to? We're, we're, that's supposed to be a joke. We're kind of program. <laughs> Catholics are kind of program. Okay, like right? the 50 50 tickets. Anyway, so Crystal Lake, I can't make this up either. I go to sit down. I was watching the first quarter. Uh, I got there late. I'm standing by the fence. I finally go up into a section where I see a lot of St. Thomas graduates and their parents. I can't make it up. If anyone's at the game, at the game. You're good. One person, a couple. Set up. At the end of the first quarter, I sit down. Next play. 46 yard touchdown pass. So, what do you think the fans are thinking? <laughs> <laughs>
flirting. He lived seven days when he came back. But I got to see him, like two, day two in the hospital. And I was with his wife first, he was having tests. And, and I, he came in and I said, Joe, who is it? Father, it's, it's bad, it's terminal, and it's, it's over. That's what he says to me. I'm not complaining. I'm not angry with God. I got 10 months. And in those 10 months, I found a priest. I went to confession. I went back to Mass. I'm ready, Father. I went to minister to him. He ministered to me. And you know what? And there's another story. Uh, Wayne, another gentleman back in 71. He had a fiance. I don't know why he didn't marry this woman. They dated for like 20, I don't know the whole story, 20 years. They wouldn't get married. 71 years old. She died a couple months ago. A couple months? No. Maybe I don't know sure she died. A couple months ago or a year. He didn't go to church on his sister's testimony for 50 years. No church. So she, he started asking her questions. Next thing you know, he finds a priest in Oklahoma. He goes to confession. He starts going to Mass. He starts offering Mass for his sister. He says, when I die, offer Mass is for me. And so I said to the sister, what converted him? And he said, I didn't want my girlfriend to be somewhere in the next life. Right, I couldn't get into it. Mm. In both instances, they, and I, I checked this, this is a fact. In both instances, they had amazing faith as kids, which enabled them to fall back on something when I am in trouble. The problem we got today, folks, why this is such an urgency, is the kids today don't necessarily have the faith to fall back on. I just did a wedding. And I, I told this to the married couple's parents, so I'm going to tell you. Semi-hostile crowd, okay? <laughs> just being honest. Semi-hostile. I know when my jokes are funny and they're not. Some are just funny. <laughs> and they're like, oh. <laughs> and so I, I turn away from the couple. I do this at funerals. I do it at weddings. I say, we're probably not going to meet again. Our paths aren't probably going to cross. I need you to come back to church. I need you to dial up your spirituality. And here's the mistake I made. I said, come back to church and you're missing mass. They don't understand those words. They really don't. I was taught a great lesson today. If I want to talk to the youngers, I gotta fine tune my message. I need better examples. I need more illustrations. I need to speak to their hearts in a language that I think they in this present culture can understand. Because here's what I came up with. This is all brand new. We're working on this you and I together. They didn't walk away from the church. They didn't walk away from Holy Communion. They didn't walk away from salvation. They never heard about it convincingly. They never have. I really believe that. It's like a sixth grade girl who told me three years ago, stop telling people they're missing church. Tell them you're missing the love, Holy Communion, which is the blood and water poured out of Christ's side. That's what people are missing. God, the real presence, salvation, the fullness of life, true for joy. True joy. Why am I so happy? Come on, it's not me. It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit, it's the Lord. The, 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 don't, don't, these kids don't realize they're missing divine intervention. A lot of our kids don't realize they're missing the development of a deep, abiding faith and friendship with Jesus. So, folks, the, the, uh, moving the homilies to coming to a close quick, you hope. Huh? <laughs> We've got to work. Please don't be afraid. What are you scared of? What are you afraid of? Don't you? If something happens to you or I, and we meet the Lord later on tonight, are you going to be proud of your accomplishments in the spiritual life? In terms of evangelization? Did you raise your kids in the faith? Did you raise your grandchildren in the faith? Did you take your time to take, teach your kids how to make the sign of the cross? You even know why we make the sign of the cross. And why we put the, the, the hands here and the hands here and the hands over here. Or why we do this. Or why we genuflect. These are all important things and they're within our grasp to learn and develop and hopefully teach. Now, that's the work. The church, say a little bit see. I'm not asking you to go there. There's a sign on, on, on you passing by. The church, a quote from Pope, uh, not Pope, sorry, I was going to say Pope St. Francis, Pope Francis, <laughs> a quote on, their, on their, their, their billboard. Uh, the church is not an institution. It's a love story. Did you hear today's gospel, for those of you who read it or listened very intently, did you hear what Jesus said about the church? This is what he said. When you hold a banquet, that's what this is. It's a love banquet. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here, right? So love bank. I came for love. That's why I'm doing this, to receive more love. When you hold the banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. Think, do not think about the church as a place for the saved or the righteous. 
This is a place for sick people, for sinners, for spiritually handicapped people. So when our friends walk away, and they're professionals at criticizing us, they should, they're all, if there was an Olympic team, they'd all be stars at it. They criticize us on one side, down the other. And guess what? They're talking about the wrong reality. We are not a righteous people. We are not, we are becoming saved. We're not saved people, we're becoming saved. We're in the process of salvation. So when they say, you see, we hear this all the time. And you know what? If you're not talking about the faith, you probably don't hear this. So I'll tell you, because I do. You Catholics, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You're hypocrites all week long, and you go to church for an hour. To which I respond, huh, imagine you're going to go for the hour. <laughs> <laughs> and my second line, and I'm not going to tell you what movie I got it from, Mr. Senator, we are all hypocrites. We all have things in our lives that are not in conformity with God's will. At least we're trying. So get your definition of the church straight. It's not a collection of people that form some kind of hierarchy and this this, this man-made institution. Yes, it has that. But the center of my church is Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that unites us in one body. Remember, one of the United States, and I think I think they're failing at it, one nation under God. The church is all the nations under God and his son Jesus. Let me close with this. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Think about the resurrection. Believe in the resurrection. There is a resurrection. Prepare for the resurrection. Live the resurrection. And if the resurrection means anything to you, tell somebody about the resurrection. Because when it's all said and done, that's where I want to be. And I hope you join me.